Welcome to Ken Hance, the best storyteller in Texas podcast. And to all of our new listeners, hello. Thanks for checking us out. We appreciate it. We release a new episode every Monday. You can find us uh, on Instagram at Best Storyteller Podcast and on Facebook. And you've got a lot of Twitter followers uh, as well. Really do. Um, today's saying of the day has to do with aircraft. And I have got two that I really like. One, pilots should always stay 10 miles in front of their aircraft. You know, they <laughs> need to be well prepared. And the other is there's a lot of old pilots and there's a lot of bold pilots, but there's not any old, bold pilots. They fall by the wayside. And uh, all my pilots that I've ever used are, are cowards and they don't like bad weather. So I, <laughs> that's the reason I hire them. And I came back from the uh, big, big 12 tournament in Kansas City, and it took three hours in a flight. That usually it takes me two hours to get from Kansas City to Austin. We were flying south out of Kansas City, and then we got into Oklahoma, and they diverted us over to uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, and then over by Little Rock, and then down to Alexandria, uh, Louisiana, and then over to Lufkin, and finally into Austin took three full hours, so it, it was a busy day. And uh, then yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, and that's the most widely celebrated festival in the world. Uh, on holidays, not a holiday every place, and holiday-wise, it, it comes in, you know, kind of like January 1st. Uh, but Christmas Day is celebrated most of the world, but a lot of places it's not. But, you know, St. Patrick's Day, I think about this. He was born into a wealthy family in Rome. And then uh, when he was 16, he was down by the docks in a seaport there in Italy. And they shanghaied him. They kidnapped him. And, uh, you know, you get kidnapped. You, I mean, you didn't. if you were a teenage boy, you didn't hang out near the ships. They'd kidnap you. And after you're out to sea, you know, and nothing you can do except work. And uh, they'd work in, and he got uh, stranded in Ireland, was there six years, and uh, found God, had a vision that one day a ship was going to pick him up. And he went to this location, the ship picked him up, took him back to Italy. Mm. But uh, he got the credit for running all the snakes out of Ireland. And some historians point out there are no snakes there to start with. But uh, that, that you know, kind of does not coincide with the myth. And so he, he got, you know, got that recognition. And then the Irish parades and holidays really didn't start until the Irish immigrated to the United States. And they started, had the first one in 1762 in Manhattan and where they had a big band. And and then it's, it's become, it, it was a, a religious festival. Well, it's, you know, now it's how much green beer can you drink and, and things like that. And they turn the little water there in, in Chicago green mm -hmm. on, uh, and they say it doesn't hurt the environment, so it's okay. Uh, but uh, it's widely uh, celebrated. Every, when I was in Argentina last, uh, uh, last October, they had signs uh, about, uh, St. Patrick's Day, you know, March 17th, be sure and sign up now so you can save a place at this bar, this club, or this mm -hmm. grill. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a big deal. You know, it wasn't that long ago in this country, there were signs in door fronts that said Irish need not apply. Yeah. They were not welcome. They were considered dirty, you know, sneaky, um, you know, just not very well liked. But over time... Things change. Yeah, people got to know them, uh, you know, and they discriminated against them. They didn't know them. Mm -hmm. And they read stories in the newspaper that they were fleeing the United States because they couldn't find enough potatoes to even eat. <laughs> and uh, that was, uh, there was some of that, but, you know, it, it wasn't as bad as, as the press made it out to be. Right. Uh, but, but they're hardworking people, good people, and, uh, you know, that's... Uh, all generalizations are bad, including this one. But if you try to classify all of a certain group in a certain specific uh, attitude, uh, you, you know, you, that's just bad. It's mm -hmm. just wrong. It's just dumb. Yeah. 
Yep. And uh, you're going to have all kinds of people in every, every group. I saw a story this week, Chancellor, I thought of you. I see a lot of stories, and I think of you. In fact, uh, earlier this week, we're sitting in Chancellor Hans's home at, his, uh, at, a, at a, a breakfast table in his home, and uh, someone was talking about getting a new table, and I told him the story of this table yeah. about the old boy in Italy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was in Sorrento, Italy, and, and uh, my wife Susie found this table. And she came over and got me and said, I found the most beautiful table. And I went over and looked at it. And I said, there's no way you can ship that to Austin, Texas. And the guy that was selling, I didn't even know he knew English. The guy that was the salesman standing there and he said, shipped one to Wimberley, Texas last <laughs> week, which is about 20 miles away. And I thought, man, I just bought a table. And uh, and they shipped it. And it, I mean, it didn't have any problems. Been, it had been a great table, but... Uh, it, it was not cheap. The other story that made me think of you is I saw that Frontier Airlines is now selling a middle seat. Middle seat. Right. And I told them your your throw-up bag. Yeah. Trip. You know, the thing to do if you don't want somebody in that middle seat, first of all, always check with the ticket people to see if it's going to be a full flight. Mm-hmm. If it's going to be a full flight, then start looking for a small person and save them a seat. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but if it's not going to be a full flight, then – you know, when you get situated in, in in the window seat or the aisle seat, get that barf bag and <laughs> open it and just look at it. And people slow down. They may look, but once they see you got that barf bag on, they just speed up and go on by. And, but now Frontier's got a deal where you can uh, buy the middle seat. Mm-hmm. Now, I think it's less than $50 or something. It's $49. Cheap. Yeah, yeah it's, it's cheaper than going out and buy, buying two seats. And uh, I saw I got one of the basketball games last week, and and uh, I, I told one of my law partners, told Mike Woodward, that I, I wish I knew that guy's name. He looked like he weighed about four fifty to four eighty, <laughs> and I and he said why, and I said because I sat between him and his twin brother on a flight from Baltimore to Austin. I mean, it was the I got I got on I took an earlier flight, so I couldn't board, you know. Mm-hmm. until till the end and and uh I, I, they had one seat left you know these guys were huge <laughs> and uh they were bigger than larger than any left tackle in the in the nfl did you talk to them find out what they did or were they just big guys were they, they were just big or? guys and and uh I, I i put my earphones and listened to a book uh-huh. and act like i wasn't there yeah, there's nothing worse than getting someone next oh, to you on an airplane that yeah. talk your ear off. I mean, they were huge. <laughs> and if they talked a lot, that'd make it even worse. Yeah, and they might have. I had a one time, a, I was a young congressman. I was going from DFW to Washington, and the guy beside me for, was from Tucson. And he said, what do you do for a living? And I told him I was a congressman. I will never, ever do that again. He gave me advice all the way, and then he wrote some up down and handed it to me and things to do. And it was his day to be with a member of Congress, and he was going to take full advantage of it. <laughs> now, after that, I'd tell him I'm a lawyer or something like that. Let's talk about a woman. And I want you to kind of explain um, diplomatic plates for people because a woman in Florida was arrested for using diplomatic plates last week. And then she got picked up from jail, and the person that picked her up also got arrested for using diplomatic plates. Do those plates kind of make you immune to Yeah, the- they, they do. You, you've, get, you've got to qualify for them. And mm-hmm. you qualify in Washington, D.C., you always looked. If somebody had diplomatic tags, sometimes they weren't real good drivers. You had to be on the alert and be watching for them. They'd run over you. Uh, but... Uh, you're not supposed to use them for personal reasons or anything like that, even though a lot of them do. But that lady, she was using the diplomatic plates, and she wasn't entitled to them. They were temporary diplomatic plates. You know, you think something, they, they had a big change this year on the temporary license um, tags uh, for uh, cars that are new. Uh, they're they're making a change on that within the next two years but uh she she had these diplomatic tags and she she wasn't entitled to them and they rested rested after they pulled her over for a stop she made some minor traffic violation look if you've got bad baggage on your car or background something like that don't have some 
problem with the tail light or you know you get get arrest, wind up getting arrested and she got arrested and she called a friend to come get her and a friend came down there she had on the same tags <laughs> and uh and they were illegal tags so she got arrested you know they were they were two and oh it's they, like you know, the, the old saying if you're doing one thing wrong don't do two yeah you know <laughs> don't don't do it twice you know and should have moved on but uh didn't and uh you know, I, I, that kind of makes me think of the Toronto, which has had a lot of automobile theft, a lot. The police there have advised people to put the keys to your car in the front between your door, your screen door and your real door <laughs> with a note that, that they can take the car and not break in the house or break in the car. Uh, how about I'm going to shoot you for steal my car? <laughs> you know, I mean that 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 might uh, might uh, get their attention. I would get a, I'll get a letter or two on that one. But uh, uh, you know, in Albuquerque, they have a lot of problems with car theft because it's close to Mexico and in suburbans, they, car thieves like suburbans. They you know take them south. And uh, I had some friends went up for a uh, for a doctor's appointment in albuquerque and their friends from the doctor in rio dosa sent them to albuquerque and they go up there they go in and they get a quick review and the doctor they're, they're not there 30 minutes they go go out and their car is gone mm. and uh, they never saw it again and so but the toronto would say just leave those keys out there or you know uh, leave a note on the car. The keys are in there. Don't break the window, you know. And there's a couple of water bottles in there for you. <laughs> you know? That's giving service to the uh, thieves. Yeah, why make it easier? When you yeah. were growing up, did you leave keys in cars? Oh yeah, we it? did. We, and we'd go for the weekend to visit uh, uh, an aunt and uncle I had in La Mesa, and which is two or three hours away. And and we would uh, uh, we wouldn't lock the house. And uh, and we'd leave the pickup there. We'd take the car and the pickup there, bit the keys in it. And nobody stole it, or mm -hmm. you know, what I mean, you just didn't think people would do something like that. Would stoop so low to steal your your car? You know, a lot of people don't, don't understand why fence cutters. You know, at one time, carry fence cutter in Texas was a felony, and uh, they didn't want you know stealing cattle. Mm -hmm. And then it was. Uh, a hanging a fence in some places in the West to uh, steal somebody's horse. Because if if you robbed them and stole their horse and they were out in the middle of nowhere, they were stuck. Can we go back to the diplomatic plates for just a moment? Yeah. Why is it important that they have those plates? Well, it's it's important so that your diplomats, where you, wherever you're located in the United States, if we, if we have a diplomat, in Finland, we don't want the government ha harassing them. Of course, they wouldn't in Finland. Uh, but in uh, so Soviet days, uh, they would. And uh, so you gave uh, diplomacy uh, recognition to countries here and countries there, and you're not subject to those laws. And uh, they get diplomatic tags, and, and they can drive where they want to. And you, they don't give them a speeding ticket or anything, and and uh, it, you, you have to have a pretty egregious violation if if the person has legitimate uh, tags. And if they've got legitimate tags, police usually try to leave them alone. That's the whole point, right? Yeah, they, they leave just, them alone. But, but I will say this, that they're trained by their home governments, you know, to try to adhere to the laws to not create a bad story mm -hmm. that would uh, embarrass the country. But I know in Washington, D.C., I always kept my eye out for them. I was afraid they'd run over me and then, <laughs> then, then not pay for you. Uh, California, there's a story out about a woman at a Subway sandwich shop with a chainsaw. Had a chainsaw in the back of a pickup or back of a truck and was starting it in the, uh, uh, you know, revving it up. You know, I mean, that's, that's just kind of crazy. And uh, she got arrested. But, uh, you know, speaking of chainsaws, the, the president of Argentina, he campaigned with a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. And he'd have a big sign that'd say budget, and he'd use that chainsaw and cut it in half and everything. 
inflation's coming down dramatically in Argentina. He's, uh, you know, he cut out a lot of agencies, a lot of programs, and uh, and uh, started using the dollar instead of the Argentina peso. And uh, so he's moving in the right direction if uh, inflation's coming down. I know you're a big believer and supporter. You went down and met with with the people in Argentina. What was it that got your attention about him? Do you remember? He it, yes, I mean he was flamboyant, mm-hmm. and uh, and he had been a radio talk show and then a TV talk show, and so he came out of nowhere, and uh, he was uh, advocating. He, he was a big Trump supporter and didn't make any bones about it. And the other guy was a Biden supporter. That tells you how strong the U.S. is. That two of our main two candidates would be copied in other countries. And uh, Argentina, it, you know, that that should be a great country. And it has been, but they've had some governments that have been socialist almost and, and just they spend them into oblivion. And uh, there's a lot of natural resources, oil and gas, uh, wheat, uh, cattle. Everywhere you go down there, uh, there's plenty of beef to eat. And it and it's good, and uh, it's a great country. If you've never been to Argentina, you ought to go. The only bad thing about it, it's about an 11, 12 hour flight to get down there, <laughs> and that that gets a little old. You know, they're putting out some of the best rodeo cowboys too right now. Some yeah. of the best bull riders and ropers are coming out of Argentina and that part of the world. B- big business rodeo in uh, in Argentina, and and uh, they uh, they have. Uh, you know the waterfalls that they have there. It there's like three miles across mm-hmm. the waterfalls. It's it makes Niagara look like you know a small leak at a plumber's <laughs> house. <laughs> Didn't you say you knew a plumber in Houston could fix that? Yeah, that's why they told me that you got anything like that in Houston. And so we got a plumber who could f- fix it. <laughs> Uh, let's move on. Did you see the story about the bees that swarmed the... Uh... Yeah, they got in the helicopter, and, and it was the police helicopter. And they got stuck in there, and the queen bee was in there, and they liked to never got them out, and they finally got them relocated. Uh, you know, if you get to seeing bees, bees can get in the house, in the siding. Mm-hmm. They can get any place, and uh, you don't want to make them mad. Call somebody that's professional to come come help you get rid of them bees are important there was some concern about bees a couple of years ago but they seem to have, have come back they're very yeah, important they're very important uh, the pollen and and uh, making sure that uh, uh that there's right segments in uh, the right plants at the mm-hmm. right time and that's what bees are for and they they do a good job but uh they can put a whelp on you pretty good and <laughs> You get crossways with a bunch of bees. Don't try to knock down their nest or something like that. Let somebody else do that knows what they're doing. I've always wondered how a beekeeper becomes a beekeeper. Like, what was it that made that interesting? Well, the first thing is you can't be too smart. <laughs> if, you know, if you're really smart, uh, you're, you're going to stay away from bees. I shouldn't say that. I'm sure there are smart beekeepers out there. But uh, it's, it's, it's a dangerous profession. You can send your emails to Hans. Yeah, if you didn't like that, if you're a beekeeper, you know, we might even interview you. Yeah, you can send your emails to info. Hey, by the way, Hans. I got a, I got an email in, and I want to make sure this guy knows, that contested my deal that there are more people living in downtown Austin in any city other than New York City and mm-hmm. Manhattan. And uh, a guy with the chamber told me that, and I'm trying to get that documented, and I will answer that. Okay. And, uh, and if it comes out that I'm not correct, then I'll admit it. But I think I'm, what what I was told, I am correct. And uh, and people just don't realize how many people live downtown Austin. Yeah. I mean, it's it's busy. It is a busy place. It's a big city. But you know what's Huge. funny about Austin is that, boy, you make a wrong left turn and you're in the country. It doesn't yeah. take long to get outside and, and you're in rural areas surrounding Austin, but rapidly expanding. Rapidly. Dripping Springs, uh, Buda, Taylor, and Hutto. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's that's where all these California businesses are coming to, and they're they're going to those smaller communities. And every week you see some business, and they may not have 100 employees, and they may have 20,000, but they're moving to Texas uh, because California is so anti-business. I can't understand that. Ca- California and New York. On that Trump trial, if if you have financial statement they don't like, if you supported the wrong candidate or came out and said, 
they're going to go after you and try to, you know, uh, what happens if there's a financial statement and you put down some things that are wrong and the bank loses some money or something, you're going to get prosecuted. But I've never seen anyone prosecuted before that uh, on, on financial statement where there's not a loss. Right. And the Trump deal, they got the bank got paid back, said they wanted to oh, do business again. Yeah. And still. There's going to be a lot of people, including me, are not going to do business with somebody. you got to file a financial statement in the state of New York. They're going to be fleeing New York. Well, it, it, you know, I mean, it, you can have it and make sure it's 100% correct, but they may still come after you mm-hmm. just to bruise you. Because they don't like you. They don't like you. They don't <laughs> like your politics. Yeah. Campaign on that basis. I'll get rid of people who disagree with me. So, tough deal. By, by the way, Major League Baseball, there was a story this week that uh, – about the team that had that was closest to the number of lighthouses, you know, along the ocean. That it was New York Mets, and they had twenty five lighthouses within twenty five miles. Hmm. And uh, so that you know, I mean, that, that kind of surprised me. The Rockies had one within hmm. twenty five miles. Now, I mean, there are no ships going to be coming in uh, within twenty five miles of Denver. No. I don't. Know, somebody built a lighthouse that. Maybe lived in it or something. That was that. That when I looked at it and kind of thought, "Well, that's crazy." I mean, you know, uh, Texas Rangers didn't have any. No, there's no need. Uh, St. Patrick's Day, which was yesterday, uh, a lot of people talk about what they eat. Really, it's what they drink. <laughs> they drink green beer or something. They got to wear green. There was there was a girl in school in Dimmit with me. She would pinch you, and cause bruises or blood blisters uh, if you didn't have on green. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's tough. And I don't know where she is now, but I don't, don't, don't want to be close or nearby on St. Patrick's Day. Corned beef and cabbage, uh, that's a big one uh, for the Irish, mm-hmm. or an Irish potato, uh, mm-hmm. you know. But uh, there's a, a lot less concentration on the food than there is on the drink. In closing up today, uh, the saying of the day, there were two, and they have to do with pilots, always stay 10, 10 miles in front of the airplane so that you know you anticipate what's going on. And the second, there's a lot of old pilots, a lot of bold pilots, but there's not any old, bold pilots. So, uh, you know, always make sure your pilot's a coward and doesn't like uh, uh, yellow or red on the, on the radar screen. It's Ken Hans, best storyteller in Texas. Appreciate you listening.